Hey YouTube, it's Roman, I'm back. Today I wanna to talk about time series analysis. More specifically, I wanna talk about unit roots and why they can lead to a misinterpretation of results from different statistical models. Now there's no better way to explain something than with an example, so let's actually do this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to import Y finance as YF, and then we're gonna import stats models as SM. And we're gonna see if we can create a linear regression model to forecast the closing price of a stock for the following day using today's close. Let's go ahead and get some data. I'm gonna say Apple equals YF dot ticker and then Apple. And then the data is gonna equal Apple dot history, the start, we'll just go back to 2018. And then we can just print this data here. Okay, cool. So now we have the open high low close for Apple going back to 2018. And we're gonna wanna create a new column for returns. So I'm just gonna say data returns is equal to data close dot percent change. And then I'm going to drop the first row because if we look at the first row, you'll see that we have an NAN value for, what's this, this is January 2nd because we only pulled data to January 1st, so we're not gonna have the day before. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and drop this. So I'm gonna do data.drop NA axis equals zero for rows, not columns. Uh, and then I'm gonna do it in place, meaning I'm gonna assign this new data frame to the original data object. Then if we print this new data, we'll see that we effectively got rid of that NA value. All right, so now what we would like to do is create a target close and a target returns column. And those two columns are going to have the contemporaneous days following returns or following close information. So it's gonna be looking ahead to that next day. And we're gonna see if we can use the current day's information to explain essentially a forecasting regression the close or the returns. So let's let's go ahead and do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say data target close. So this is tomorrow's close is equal to data close dot shift. And we're gonna shift it by minus one. So we're gonna create a new column over here and we're gonna effectively shift this entire close series up one. So we're gonna have an NAN value for the last observation. So we're gonna do this and then we can print the data. And then you see we effectively shifted the entire series up by one. So now we're just gonna rinse and repeat. We're gonna do this for the returns. Target returns is equal to data returns dot shift minus one. And then we have the same issue with the NAN values as in the beginning when we created our returns column. So we can just do drop NA axis zero. So we're gonna be dropping the last row and then in place equals true. So we affect the change in that object. So now we are all ready for our regression. Okay, so let's start with the closing price regression and see if we can get any explainability in the future close based on the current close. So just for starters, I'm gonna create a markdown cell and I'm gonna say closing price regression. And now we're gonna actually use the stats models uh, package. So I'm gonna say model is equal to uh, sm.regression.linearmodel.ols. Uh, now we want our Y, which is gonna be the target close. So I'm gonna pass through the target close from our data frame. And now our X is going to be the previous or the current day's close. Uh, and we're gonna see if we can essentially uh, explain or forecast this target close based on uh, today's close. Now, just so we don't have to deal with the consequences of not adding a constant to the regression, uh, we can add a constant to our 
X series by saying sm.tools.tools.add constant. And then we can effectively add a constant to that series. Uh, now we can go ahead and fit this model by saying R is equal to model.fit. And we can print our results by saying print r.summary. So I do want to just sprinkle in and, and touch on the idea that this is the moment that every quantitative researcher, every, every you know, mathematical modeler, if you will, uh, is kind of looking forward to and, and seeing if their hypothesis is validated on some sort of fundamental statistical basis. And you know, if it's not, then we're not going to go out of our way to try to correct the hypothesis in this phase because this phase is, is more of like a, a validation, right? So we're not actually trying to fix anything here. There's nothing wrong here. This is what's explaining uh, what we thought would happen. So we're not gonna correct in this process, that is in this, this back testing process, if you will. Uh, if we get poor results here, we would want to go back to the research process, back to the hypothesis and say like, hey, you know, why did we think this was the case and why is it not the case? And then correct from there. Let's test this linear regression and all right, we got an R squared of 0.998. I'm going to quit my day job. I'm going to quit YouTube. I'm going to go retire to a beach in the Bahamas. I, I can I can forecast the closing price with with 99.8% explainability and and that's it this is my last video no more no more quant no i'm 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 kidding <laughs> this is it's uh it's not the case it's just doing uh doing my best take at a bit but but you know so so we have this this really high r squared value right and a very high adjusted r squared value this is just a, a simple like you know summary printout for a, a linear regression and we, we want to ask ourselves this question, you know, why is this R squared value so incredibly high? And if this is the case, right, if we can predict the closing price for tomorrow, or at least explain 99.8% of the variability in, in closing price, then, you know, what is, go what is going on? Because then there would be no need for, for any you know money managers or, or anything like that. We would all just use linear regressions all day long. Uh, the, I think the answer is gonna become clear when we actually take a look at the regression for the returns. So let's do exactly that. Let's go ahead and create a new markdown cell. We're gonna say the return regression. And then let's just copy all this code and do the exact same thing with the returns. So we're gonna say target returns, and then we're going to say returns. So simple returns today are trying to explain the returns tomorrow. So let's do this exact same thing, run this printout, and whatever the opposite of boom is, we, we get an R squared of 0 0.015, an adjusted R squared of 0 0.014. And, and we lose all explainability in our, in our next day forecast and our, in our explainability for next day returns. So why, why is this the case? You know, and the, the, the title of the video probably gave it away, but it's because the price process of a stock uh, has a unit root. And instead of diving into, you know, the, the te technical implications of you know, stationarity and its, its formal definition and how to test for it. I wanted to illustrate why we actually care about it. And this is exactly why, because if our process has a unit root, then we're gonna get some spurious regressions. We're gonna get regressions that have no actual basis for making, you know, proper statistical decisions. And that's exactly what we see here. We, we see we have 99.8% uh, explainability and variation of the following day's price. But if we look at the returns, which are actually more important in our sense, because if we have a portfolio, then you know, it's great if we have a level for our portfolio that we're you know, kind of trading around, say if our portfolio values you know, $10,000, you know, tomorrow the deviation from $10,000 is likely to be, you know, small, uh, as is the deviation from the previous day. 
but the returns are something that can change quite a bit um, you know, across, across time. It's not necessarily guaranteed to stay all positive, stay all negative. Um, you know, we have periods of higher volatility um, that, that tend to, to lead more volatility. That's called volatility clustering. Uh, higher volatility generally is, is contemporaneous with uh, negative returns. The, these are all stylized facts of the market that we'll, we'll go over in more depth over time. But the, the moral of the story is that unit roots can cause significant problems in statistical models. And these linear regressions aren't the only models subject to issues when using, uh, you know, processes with, with unit roots. I think the most natural next question that arises is, okay, Roman, I have this, this process, it's got a unit root, but I still want to model it. How should I go about doing this? What, what should I do? How do I get rid of this unit root? Um, and what you can do is essentially what we did in this video, though what we did is more concrete in terms of a price and then the return. You can do first order differencing, second order differencing, where you take different points in time of your process and difference it with the contemporaneous point and create a new series. And hopefully that series will reflect the characteristics of, of a stationary series, allowing you to move forward with, with your modeling. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was meant to be a, a quick kind of overview and an introduction to, to a, a very serious time series analysis topic that is, is very confusing. I mean, it's, it's something that you know, you're not going to spend necessarily a lot of time on in a time series analysis course. They kind of just push you through and, and get you to learn everything from the, their, you know, seasonality or even models, you know, the autoregressive stuff, moving average stuff. You know, they're not spending a lot of time on necessarily the application and, and the implications of the application. So uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if you have any specific questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get to them. And, and you know, you can always shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer any, any you know, even more specific questions there. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, um, you know, feel free to leave them, leave them below as well. Uh, check out quantguild.com for the latest research. Uh, and we're going to we're going to be pushing out our courses very soon on uh, introduction to Python and introduction to quant finance. So stick around for those. We're going to we're going to be focusing on teaching you the bare bones essentials. We're going to remove all of the fluff and just get you in and out with with what you need to know. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.